Good afternoon, families. It is Thursday, April 4th, 2024, and I'm coming to you with our Robot Roundup vlog for the week. So we're going to get into our top three and get started. So number one, uh, today, all of our youngest students came home with Ta -da! this year's All School Read. So for 2024, courtesy of our amazing PTO, you will receive The Lost Library by Rebecca Steed and Wendy Mass. Now, please look for the YouTube links that are in the Beagle Bulletin and our Robot Roundup vlogs, because in case you don't know, uh, Shorewood's Lake Bluff staff teachers are gonna be reading chapters of this amazing book. So the New York Times bestseller number one, indie bestseller, and the number one best kids book of 2023 is a story about a little library that is guarded by a cat and a boy who takes on a mystery and keeps it. So this came home with you today. Um, so please look for it, and then next week, I believe, those links will come out so you can follow along with staff and read a great book. Then, number two, next week, Monday, April 8th, 2024, it was going to be the solar eclipse. Now, the eclipse is going to begin at like 12.53 and reach about 50% coverage uh, by about 1.30 in the afternoon. It's going to peak about 2.08 in the afternoon and will continue to be visible until like 2.42, most of our afternoon. Um, so it will end here in Milwaukee about 3.21, pretty close to pickup time. Now, just so you know, during this time, students are going to remain indoors and in classrooms with classroom windows and shades closed. This is pretty exciting. We know students can get excited about it, but uh, the risk to eyesight is kind of not worth taking any chances. But it is a cool science happening event, and the next time it's going to happen, students are going to be, from our class, 26 years old. So we will be using a live NASA live stream to view and kind of talk about those things in our classroom. So there's that. Number three, there's no school next week. Wednesday for Eid al-Fatr, which is celebrated by Muslims worldwide, marking the end of a month-long dawn to sunset fasting for Ramadan. So... There's all that. Now let's get into our vlog points for the week. In phonics, we return from spring break with a week of short vowel review to just kind of ease into our final three weeks of our phonics instruction. So this week we've been practicing recognizing our high frequency words, decoding and blending those words, and then also improving our fluent reading skills. Not so robot-y. Sounded pretty good. In math, we started learning about initial takeaway or subtraction stories. Students have been working to solve subtraction problems and use number sentences to remember and represent their thinking. Actions such as leaving or giving, eating, going away, those all are a signal of subtraction. So for example, if I had five watermelons, one, two, three, four, five, and I ate two of them, I now have three, one, two, three watermelon slices left. So we use that oral story to then draw a picture, to write a number sentence, five total watermelons minus two, the ones we crossed out, equals three left. And we've been able to then pair that with a number bond, five total number of watermelons altogether. You notice the two here is crossed out, just like the two is crossed out up here, because those are the two that go away. That's how you see that this is not a, an addition number bond, but a subtraction number bond. Part and part equals whole for addition. Whole minus part equals other part for subtraction. So there's that. In writing, uh, we've been writing more and more nonfiction books about topics that students find interesting. We're also continuing to add an opinion book with nonfiction writing at the end of it. Just I'm challenging students to really work on three reasons to support their opinions, how they feel or like or love something or even hate something. You know, cats versus dogs, favorite foods, best movies, and more things like that. So students complete a nonfiction writing piece, and then they add a second five-page book that details their opinion about those nonfiction things and the three reasons why they feel that way. So that's something you can really work on at home. Why do you think something? Why is it your favorite? Why do you love it? Why do you not? And last but not least, we have started a new chapter book. It is the last chapter book in our toys series called Toys Come Home. 
Now, even though this is technically the last book that was published in this series, it's actually a prequel. It's how all the characters that we've come to know and love got to know each other. So now, so far, Stingray, of course, Stingray has come into the little girl's room as an actual day of birthday present. Uh, we then met Sheep, who at this time isn't one-eared Sheep. She's two-eared Sheep. Sheep still has both of her ears. And then we met another animal named Bobby Dot, who is a walrus. Now, Bobby Dot is not so nice. Turns out, Sheep and Bobby Dot and Stingray were all playing in the backyard. And Stingray somehow managed to not get thrown around, but Sheep did. And Sheep got stuck in a rose bush hanging by her ear. Stingray made a slingshot after the parents and everyone went back inside to try to get sheep out of a rose bush. But when she did, one of her ears got stuck with a thorn and then pulled off. And thus, we now have a one-eared sheep, which is what we've known sheep as in all of our other stories. The little girl's dad uh, actually had a little bit of some help because the little girl got sick and was throwing up. And she threw up all over this walrus Bobby Dot. They washed him, but he got destroyed in the dryer. He was dry clean only. So, unfortunately, the little girl did get a new walrus, but he just wasn't the same. He looked just like Bobby Dot, but his eyes just didn't quite have that life that all the other toys that kind of wake up and talk have. So, the little girl went to the store and asked if she could exchange this regular walrus for something different that she liked. And what do you know? She noticed something brown and wiggly in a basket with a little tail. And of course, who was it? It was Lumpy. So we are working on reading our last book in our toys series and enjoying all sorts of wonderful things. Probably not the rain, though. So I hope you had a fantastic spring break. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Uh, please stay healthy. Please make sure you're sending students on rainy days with stuff to go outside. We've been inside a lot this week just because it's been too mucky to go out, but fingers crossed it dries up a little bit for next week. So other than that, I hope you are safe and healthy. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.